and uh, we'll do a countdown from three. I'll do a short intro, and then we'll just kind of go more natural okay. from there. So in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode double zero of the Double Plus video on... <laughs> Nailed it. Hello. Welcome to the latest edition of the Double Plus podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode double zero of the Double Plus unboxing video cast. Ready? It is I, the generic famous gamer, Anthony joined by the driving force behind all things Double Plus Media, the one, the only, Neil. Today we'll be surprising each other with three obscure or rare video games or gaming-related items as we kind of kick off this little video series here. We are on the cusp of the latest technology in 1080p and uploading video to the internet. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. 1080. I, I don't know. I, got, I don't think my Sony Vega television can handle that. I think that's a 540 composite screen. But hey, uh, seriously, we are putting together a. Like, we wanted to kind of put a video together. Anthony have, and I have been collecting since how long? Since the 80s? Uh, probably collecting hard, like actual true word in the sense of collecting for me, probably since 97, -ish, but so been playing I've games been since 84, since about the same time. Cause we're the same age. And again, Anthony has more obscure things than I care to count. Uh, it's this, it's like a museum and mine is just bizarre things that I kept. But again, this is a test. We're going to do three pieces each. Is that how we're going to roll this thing out? Yeah, and I don't want to, I'll preface with this, and this is for the hardcore fans, because I follow a lot of YouTubers, Twitch streamers. This isn't a uh, um, a size contest, so to speak. I'm going to give a little bit of spoiler, which doesn't give away my three items. I have stuff in my collection that I could have dug a lot further back into of collecting over the past 25 years. The only spoiler I give is nothing I'm showing today is older than 10 years old. Oh. So, so it is a bit, so there will be a little bit of obscurity, or I'd say rare. Uh, these will be items people will be somewhat familiar with on some level, uh, but I didn't go all the way back digging through everything for this. If, if we get people like this and like this type of thing, I can dig further and further back. But for today, um, you know, this does fit the bill, but just so we don't get comments uh, or feedback online saying, you know, that was ridiculous or that was, you know, that wasn't as hardcore as I thought it would be. Uh, this is certainly stuff that you won't find down the block. But it's also not stuff that's going to be completely mind bending. It's not going to be like, uh, um, what is it? The like the NES World Championship Classics or whatever. You know, these aren't. You know, it's not going to be Arrow Fighters Three on AES. It's not going to be uh, Metal Slug Three on AES. It's not going to be anything in that realm. But uh, it should be enticing enough to keep your interest for hopefully the next 15, 20 minutes. Great. So here's the deal. I got a good idea here. We've got. The double plus coin flip. So okay, that's heads, and uh, tails is the same one. No, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna flip this and heads. Uh, so I'll, head I'll be tail. tails. I'll be miles per hour. That's correct. Here we go. That was a terrible flip, but that coin's heavy. It is tails. That I'll, is you. I'll, I'll kick it off. I always like to go first and uh, get things out of the way. So I'm going to start a little bit soft here. It is a game you're familiar with. It's a game that you, on a technicality, owned at one time. Then why would I want you to show it to me? I already because it's it. not on the platform you would think, because when you see it, you're going to be like, this is ridiculous. Okay. And I'm actually going to show you two different versions. We're going to show you the first version, which originally came out around holiday 2010 okay. for the Sega Dreamcast. And this would be Fast Striker mm. by Neo Geo Dev Team. So as you can see, this is in a DVD case, not a traditional Dreamcast jewel style case. And for the Neil aspect of this, he technically did own a copy of this, but on the short lived, it was on iOS before it got pulled from the marketplace about a decade ago. So anyway, Neo Geo Dev Team, originally a Neo Geo AES and MVS uh, vertical shooter with a Euro style upbeat soundtrack using CG style graphics and sprites pushing the Neo to its limits, made its way to Dreamcast as well as other platforms, made its way most recently in physical form, holiday 2018, exclusive to play Asia, Fast Striker hit PlayStation 4. Mm. So modern day, you can get this on PlayStation 4 now. I, physical copies may be sold out on play Asia, Asia, 
but you can go to the PlayStation Network. I think the game is no more than like 10 bucks, completely worth that price of admission. Uh, when this, just to put this into perspective, when this hit Neo Geo years ago, it was upwards of five to seven hundred dollars oh. for the hardcore. I look at it this way: for people who are on the fence or like, I don't know if I should plunk that ten bucks down for this digital purchase. I look at it this way: for ten bucks on PSN, it's less than the cost of shipping. So you can't beat that. And the last thing I'll show in correlation to this piece, just a little bit of a sticker here. It looks like East Asia Soft published it. So this is a little sticker that came with it. There's some other goodies in the box, but I will leave it sealed as. I have the game digitally and don't want to open the physical copy. So we'll st start off item one of three, well, that, Fast Strike that, for both the Dreamcast and PlayStation 4. You've, I, I'm shocked already that you're knocking me out of the game. because uh, That's where I'm starting. That Fast Striker, I got 1.5 limited edition. It's an in independent Dreamcast sh shmup, $150. Oh, wow. One left in stock. Mm-hmm. No, well, I have. I haven't. Said, you know, I don't think I've ever looked up the Dreamcast value so of that. So this is the Dreamcast version, right? The PS4 version probably worth nothing. That one's two starting at forty four ninety nine. Oop, 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 oop. That's forty forty four and sixty six. Forty to sixty dollar range they're attempting. That's not bad. I mean, it's gone up a bit. It's only been out about six months. Dreamcast version has been out almost a decade. That's coming out of the gate hard. You kind of put my – I was going to do my Fighter's Edge CD case from Capcom, but forget <laughs> it. I can't even do that anymore. You, you know, you actually – you. I actually meant to do a little joke at the start, and I forgot. I was going to grab a little Ryu or Dragon Ball figurine I had and say that you'd never seen this before, and I completely forgot to do it. Wait, I think I got this one. So you made up for it. I have this. This is still sitting in my desk. This is the – he looks uh, – yeah, that's almost exactly the type of thing I was going to do. And I've actually never seen that. Yes, exactly. This is the D&D version. <laughs> a little bit of all-American hero guile action. We can, we can use that these days. Well, since you went heavy at the start, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to knock you out with this piece of the past. Ready to rumble? <laughs> yes, exactly. On the Dreamcast. This predates the Dreamcast. This you actually owned as well. And I'm sure you've leafed through it maybe once or twice. It is um, limited collector's edition employee store handbook. Oh my, from what in the <laughs> world? Is this really one of your items? Yeah. I mean, it is shocking. Yeah, I will say it's shocking. Is that Neostar still? Uh, Babbage's software, etc. cetera. Neostar, hang on a sec. I'm not even sure if that's that, Neostar. That's got, that, is, that is way old for those that don't oh, know. You want to see how old it is? That's got to be pushing 23, 24 years old. This is how old it is. Here's what the discount used to be. Yeah, that was that was you know people these days say they work at X, Y, or Z store for the discount, and the discounts modern day at a lot of shops is ridiculous. You know, is worthless. But the for a period of time, the discount there was you were getting games literally either at cost or a hair under cost. Like so, yeah, it was a deal, without a doubt. So uh, especially when you were getting import games in on their dime, yeah, you could get. Uh, the only thing that sucks so, for people like us is as great as the discount was, our whole check was going back into the store. Well, that was my whole deal. The only reason I worked right. here was because I was working at Image Builder, and I worked here on Sunday because I would work four hours or four or five hour shift, and it would buy a game right. every weekend. So I get to talk to people for four hours about right. games and get a free game. It was stupid, but uh, books check out or. Books, clue books, they don't call them strategy guides. <laughs> books, clue books, and magazines, 30% off. This wow. is uh, Page Turner. It's uh, staple bound. Uh, it's a Can nice, probably 80-pound it. cardstock cover. Uh, I remember very, very vividly that Babbage's brand colors were blue. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? I, just, I can't believe Terrible. that. I haven't seen that in so long. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, this dates back to 1997. There you go. Nice one. So I've got one here uh, showing a little bit more of Neo Geo love, except not on the actual Neo Geo equipment. So the next one before I show it is truly a limited item. And the game in its origin dates back to 1994. It's heralded as one of the... Um, one of the timeless games, because 
while it's arguably sports related, it's timeless and very rudimentary and basic in concept argument. Its roots are that uh, akin to Pong. Before I'll just get to it, developed by Data East, released in 94 and released physically on PlayStation 4 within the last two years by Limited Run Games. Whoa. This would be Windjammers, also Nick Flying Power Disc, Collector's Edition. So there's the beautiful art. We got front and back. It's got the year 1994 on the back there, Windjammers, and then the Japanese uh, kanji writing underneath. I don't know how that's coming across on camera. Once again, um, I do have this digitally for those that don't know available digitally at home as we speak for PlayStation four, Nintendo switch. There is a sequel in development, uh, coming probably in the next year or so. I would say, uh, this does have online play and it's a fantastic title. So wind jammers, for those who don't know, it's essentially uh, back and forth. You get to choose one of six, uh, players. And it is essentially a beefed up steroids version of Pong. And instead of the Pong ball, you're using a futuristic style, uh, a Frisbee. So each respective player has their own attributes, strengths, weaknesses. There's also a couple mini games and it's just a whole heck of a lot of fun. And for those who don't know, one of the world's top Windjammers players is top WWE superstar Xavier Woods, who does compete sometimes at these tournaments, has done some promotion for the game. Windjammers even sometimes sneaks its way into side tourneys uh, at major fighting game tournament events. So Windjammers, a true classic. And if you're not able to get the physical edition, which might be easier to get on Switch these days, definitely download the game for the range of 10, 15 bucks. Totally worth it. So. Collect. Doors Edition. Let's see what that's going for. Limited Run Game Collector's Edition PS4. Drum roll, please. I would say starting bid realistically on that, like on the very low end, starting would have to be at at least 150 bucks. 135. So uh, we've got one that's 118 right now. Um, yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. 135 dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're going down. You started at 150. Now you're at 135. I'm expecting your next one. <laughs> 120 tops. So let's see if I can top that. That is awesome. That's fantastic. Dude, I've never seen that. I don't think I don't think I've seen the Windjammers. I would already They went quick. I think I'm going off memory without cheating looking it up. I think that went up for pre-order January 2018. I think and it was quick. It was especially that version the box one cuz they had the other version as well. That was I mean it was quick within a couple minutes. I think what happens with all of this stuff, and this is just opinion, obviously there are certain titles that are evergreen and always in people's minds. But I also think sometimes it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, and there's so many limited edition, quote, limited edition products and limited run games every week that, you know, I think it's one of those things. If they were to put it back up on their site magically next month and put out another 500, like, which wouldn't make sense, they'd sell out again. But I think there's so much stuff that gets lost in the mix now mm -hmm. because there's so many incredible sets. There's a set that went up last month that I was not able to get in on. I got in on the standard edition. There was an unbelievable knock your socks off edition of battle Garega for PS4, which came with a double vinyl set pins, Whoa. Mark poster, marquee, the game M2 interview on Blu-ray, which is available on YouTube. Um, just an incredible, but anyway, I mean, the tough thing is for for people who are truly collectors or are passionate about this, the tough thing is with Limited Run right now, I love them and respect their business, mm -hmm. but they're doing releases, multiple releases every week. And I cherry pick what I like. I cherry pick what I truly like and like to play and have an interest in. But there are some super hardcore collectors that try to complete their Limited Run collection. That's insane. And I don't know how that's possible these days. Yeah. Uh, I've got I picked up Valhalla in 2064 through them and that was hard enough. I can't imagine trying every, to yeah. Every Friday 6 a.m. pretty much. Every Friday 6 7 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, I'm not that early. Anyways, that's fantastic. So so that's my, like two out of three of the today's obscurities on double plus double zero. And what do we have coming up next, Neil? We've got a game that I actually thought I lost for a while. I had a video game store that kind of changed over time. And uh, I thought when that store shut down this game, because I lost Final Fantasy. My my original copy of Final Fantasy 3 US, which is Final Fantasy 6, but it's Final Fantasy 3 with map, everything and the condition that I got it in, uh, that was gone. 
So this one stayed around. This one mm-hmm. is a game, I believe it is a, uh, almost positive it is Russian. Mm. It's called Tetris, but it is the Tengen copy of Ten- Tetris. So this is the one that was taken off the market because it competes, like Nintendo had rights to Tetris and Tengen did not, but they still released the version anyhow. So this was released, but then pulled off the market. And I don't know how that recall went, if you were able to get a full refund or get your, I, I'm not even sure how quickly it was. I have to do a little bit of research on that because I've forgotten over the time. I'm blown away. Not, not that I've never seen it. I'm just blown away that you have this. I had no idea that was in your collection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. That's why we're doing this. I'm blown right? away. So, uh, yeah. At the very least, I don't want to exaggerate. Like, is it super rare? I don't know, but it has to be uncommon at the very least. It's it definitely... has to be uncommon because that's an original. That's not a reproduction. That is an original cart. When did you get that cart? I got that cart in. Uh, it had to be. Was it during the time frame, like when it was happening? No, because I got into the NES late because I had left. And it's still the on money. shelves, though, on the market. Yes. Okay. So I got, well, here's the deal. I got mine after, I got mine absorbed with a Nintendo collection. So I bought okay. up buying somebody okay. who was selling their Nintendo collection. This was part of it. Uh, and it was back in that time. So it was 90, I think, say 91 is when I think I got it. But I'm going to guess, so I, if it, it could be, I wonder if it might even be, yeah, maybe 90, 91. Yeah. So 90, 91. So this one on Amazon is going for a uh, share application window. Drum roll, please. I'm going to say without knowing anything, like I kind of, I want to glance. So I'm going to say 85. Now I'm going to look. It's in the 120 to 150 range. This is, <laughs> this is now the, uh, it's like, uh, oh, I think this is worth 120. Ant- the antique roadshow. Thank you so much. The antique roadshow. So. Um, we truly are the same age now that I've called out that show. I'm, I'm truly yeah. the same age as Neil. So, uh, Tengen Tetris, <laughs> this is the Soviet mind game, unlike today's Soviet mind games. But anyways, this is a, I am very happy that I got to surprise you. I thought the software, et cetera, one was going to shock you more than this, but it looks like you didn't even know I had it. Yeah. I am blown away. I didn't think you had anything NES related in your collection. I have five NES cartridges. Wow. That's it. And for hardcore Tetris fans, if you're unable to get this Tengen version on NES, don't forget this September to get your pre-orders in for the upcoming Genesis Mini, which will have the the highly sought-after, super-duper-rare Sega rendition of Tetris on the Genesis Mini console. That is that is beyond mind-blowing. That is a whole episode and topic in and of itself. Yes. I will leave it at that um, and let players, before they tune out of this, as they get back to their Tetris 99 on Switch <laughs> and elsewhere. It's kind of funny you're uh, ending on a Nintendo-related item. I'm going to also end on a Nintendo-related item that is also unofficial. And this was not planned. I know this sounds like complete BS at this point in time. So before I sh- show this and break all of my equipment in front of me and knock my laptop over, thank God I didn't do that. Otherwise, this would be episode double zero, one and done. This is... An unofficial book came out in 2017. I backed it on Kickstarter in 2016 approximately. It comes by way of a UK entity. And as some may or may not know, I'm big into video gaming related art books. Some of the beautiful Dark Horse translated books that have come out in recent years in correlation to Zelda, the Super Mario Brothers series. Uh, Big fan of... um, just a lot of high quality, beautiful print publications, as much as I can get my hands on. As we all know, sadly, that market is not what it used to be. Nonetheless, there's a company that's out there out of the UK. They've put a few books together in recent years called Bitmap Books. And um, not to get weird, not to get confused with ROM, ROM. Uh, that is another company that does some great books. And maybe it's because uh, I'm a Yankee and live over here stateside. I get the two companies mixed up, but this one is by Bitmap Books. And before I continue, you can check out their site at www.bitmapbooks.co.uk. So I had was one of the supporters on this, and this is the unofficial SNES Super Famicom, a visual compendium. And this clocks in at about 550 pages, hardbound. 
This is an absolutely unbelievable treasure for SNES fans, and I will go out on a limb. I don't want to make that statement the greatest console of all time because that is really tough to make when you have the original PlayStation NES, which laid the foundation for getting the industry out of its crash in 1983. So I know it's a bold statement, but I would definitely put the Super Nintendo at least in the top three. And this book, I don't know how much I'm going to show you due to its size and what I can do here. I'm I'm not going to do a very good Vanna White, but (laughs) from what you can see, it has interviews, beautiful imagery. There's pull-out sections, uh, transparent bookmark, um, ribbon bookmarks, uh, interviews with Rare, all the major titles in SNES's history. Um, For a better look at this, a much better job than I'm able to do here being captured. Bitmap Books has done a wonderful job on this. And recently, within the last couple of weeks, I have not been able to get my hands on it, but they recently have done the same thing for the Sega Master System. So most recently, they put out a Sega Master System book. And in the past, they've done one for the Amiga, the Commodore 64. But the one I had to get my hands on and back, no doubt, was the Super Nintendo. That is absolutely stunning. I can't get over that. Yeah, and the slipcase, beautiful. Um, Yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. Quality from everything from the paper stock, the overall quality of the piece itself, the slipcase. I don't know if they have slipcase versions left or they may all come in slipcases. That I'm not sure, as this was from uh, Kickstarter. But of the highest quality, quality, I'm looking, it looks like 30 pounds US. That's probably about $45 zone before shipping. And it is more than worth it. So this is kind of a double whammy, a kind of plug for them. And uh, their books are beautiful pieces to add to one's gaming collection. Uh, Unbelievable. Thank you so much for sharing that. All right. So the last one, the one I'm going to close on, it's not as impressive in terms of the breadth of history. Mine came out and, uh, and it's crazy. We've talked about video games and looking at our collectible video games. And I've brought up a, a manual for Babbage's at the store. I mean, that's what this is all about. Right. It's like finding artifacts. It's artifacts throughout history. And not everything that Indiana Jones uncovered was the Ark of the Covenant, right? He uncovered like the Staff of Ra and all these other. That's what this is about. It's about the, you know, the robust history. So in 2012... One of my favorite games of all time, uh, I, I would buy anything about it. And I just shared this with Anthony earlier, but it's a game by uh, that game company. And it's a game called Journey. And they brought out a book that was called oh. The Art of Journey. And it's illustrated by Matt Nava. And this book is, this was, uh, again, I, I couldn't find out how few there were. This is the first edition. I think it's had a subsequent printing. But the first edition was signed by, ooh, and it came with the little soundtrack, which expired in 2015. So you can see the code 2015. So I'm really hoping that I did download that. <laughs> but you can see it's signed by Matt Nava and Genova Chen. This is more, much more of a Neil endeavor and piece. Uh, he's so passionate about this. But this is definitely Journey is one of those games, much like Shadow of the Colossus, much like Eco that brings up the debate as video games being true art. So this this has a place in many true gamers' hearts. Uh, stunning from start to finish. Uh, yeah, A true piece of work. So the game is absolutely phenomenal uh, in itself, but Blue Canvas did a great job on this book. Now, here's the crazy thing about it. This book has been in my office since 2012, and I just opened it there. It's been opened maybe a couple, like a half dozen times. And I just looked this one up. This is where it gets crazy. So your total was, where were we at? We had 150. Uh, oh, yeah. So Fast Striker Dreamcast was about a buck fifty. Uh, Wind Jammers clocking in at a low on a buck thirty five. So one thirty five, one fifty, and and then um, uh, the SNES Visual Compendium, unofficial by Bitmap, about thirty pounds. We'll say about forty five, fifty U.S. dollars. So 150 and 50, it's 200 and another buck 35. So I'm clocking in around 335, the base price of a Neo Geo title in the early 90s. Okay. Any guess on what the Art of Journey is going for right now? Uh, 175. I would guess probably 
because I think I paid sixty for it. So I would be like one fifty would be great. Two to three times the price over the last several years. It so is, my it guess, is critically acclaimed, a, a true piece of art. Yeah, two bills. Two bills. That's what I would think. Not uh, not this. So the game, a books well, has it new for nineteen hundred dollars. Is that for the original code and dev kit? <laughs> I think Matt Nava comes out to your house. Is that their Kickstarter for their next project? What's going on? What is that? Nineteen? Well, oh, just shy of two. Well, just shy of two grand. So I would say that this one's pretty high up there because it's original print, signatures are included, but it's it's not anything I'm going to part with. It's one of my favorite games of all the game experiences. Not only favorite games, games experiences of all time because of I'm not going to ruin it for you, but if you've played it, you understand that it is the journey of uh, going through the experience of life together or the experience of the game together. And the end of the game left such an incredible mark that as soon as I got done with it, I played it a uh, second, third time, and then just talked about it incessantly to anybody who would listen for the next few years. Absolutely awesome game. Uh, and a book that's, it does, it, it was worth the price. I remember at that time, 2012, I was actually out of work. Uh, <laughs> And I'm like, do I buy this or not? And I'm like, I got to, I have to buy it. So I was out of work, living, you know, I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I wound up making that decision to pick it up. And it's, again, it hasn't left the office since then. That is a beautiful piece. And at the very end, you hail married me. So come back <laughs> from behind victory here on Double Plus episode double zero in video form. We'll leave viewers with this to stir the pot and get them all riled up. And coming exclusive to the Epic Store, Shenmue 3 this uh, November, also making its way to PlayStation 4. There is one to really get the fire burning and really get people upset. Originally announced for Steam via the Kickstarter. And is now they have to iron that out as now Epic has stepped in and getting Shenmue 3 here. And we saw the whopping 60 seconds of new footage at this past E3. But that's a topic for another day. So guys and gals, if you like this type of thing, you know, it's pretty uh, laid back, low key here as we start our first unofficial episode out of the studio in video form, putting a visual to the voices you've heard for over half a decade at Double Plus. For Neil and myself, Anthony, we hope you enjoy and we'll be sure to catch you sooner rather than later.